Okay, and welcome everybody. If you can hear me, can you just check uh, some people out there? Can you just send me a message, mate, so um, we can hear you? Um, Chris, you can hear me all right, can't you? I can hear you fine, buddy. You can hear you fine? <laughs> just want to make sure. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just come on board. I think it's a yeah. It's like there's a fire engine going past. I've just got some people coming up. <laughs> okay, we're ready, Chris. Are you ready? We're all ready. Everybody can see. Say thanks, Paul. Paul, it says we're all loud and clear from both. So it's a wonderful thing. And Sarah can hear us, and John can hear us, and everybody can hear us. So. Welcome everybody to our webinar tonight, Wedding Photography is Dying? Question um, mark. One of the photographers I coach is a person called, is a person called uh, Chris Thomas and I've got Chris with me tonight. So hi Chris. Hi everyone. And thanks for your time this evening. I know you're a busy man but um, we just want to hold you up for 30... 35 minutes and just ask you the hard questions. Bring it on. Bring it on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring it on, all right. Um, so, Chris, you're a master photographer? Correct. As uh, via... With, with, with the AIPP, yeah. Just a, a once-off or many times? Uh, once-off for now. I'm starting slowly. <laughs> you're working on it. All right. I'm working on it. That's right. So this is a picture of you and your wife. You both run the business. You're the one on the left. I mean the right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're the serious. Yeah, I'm not the good looking one. Yeah. I'm the awfully serious one on the right. You're the one without glasses. Okay. And your web address is uh, websites uh, christopherthomas.com.au. Correct. So if people want to go and check you out, you can have a look at that. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you and, and other people out there that uh, have come on board tonight and thank you for coming, you know, you you sell um, albums and you only sell albums and you have uh, an incredible sort of strike rate and, and sales. So we want to delve into that just to help people out there and see if we can help them get great sales too. So you work out of home, and this is a couple of pictures of your home studio. Can you just tell us about it and what you have there and where you are, where you're located, and how long you've been there? Okay, we're, in, we're located in a, in, a, in a Brisbane. We're about a 10-minute drive from the CBD, um, due east, uh, in, a, in a nice pocket, uh, very up-and-coming, uh, uh, a very old suburb. It's now an up-and-coming uh, suburb but with, with, with lots of young families. Mm -hmm. um, we can see the picture on the left is our foyer, so it, it, it is a home. It's not a sort of. Well, we did custom build the studio, but uh, that just involved putting a couple of walls into what used to be the garage um, and painting it up and looking, making it look pretty. Um, so, but the one on the left is um, uh, our foyer, which we wanted to make look as much like a gallery as possible. So you can see all of our uh, Apple Award prints up. Um, and my screen so it keeps kicking in. Here we go. I'll turn that off. Um, so it, it, that, we, we like that because it gives a bit of a talking point that there are wedding images up, but I think the ones right in front of you, none of them are wedding images. Wow. Uh, it just gives another talking point and the clients can see you're passionate about, uh, about not only weddings but about other genres of photography. So, um, and then on the picture on the right, you can see the, the studio. It is quite simple. We, we are in the process of uh, improving it. Um, but maybe it goes to show that, that um, uh, although I, I am a believer of, uh, of displaying your worth um, in terms of how you present, um, uh, we, we must be doing all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a seat uh, in the client's, where the client's seat, uh, sorry, I'll start again, where, where the customer's seat sit in the, in the couch that's on the right-hand side there. It's quite a, from that vantage point, it's very visual, even though the, the walls look quite sparse in this picture. It's an incredibly wide-angle uh, lens, that one, but um, uh, they're, they're, they're quite immersed with, with what's on the walls from where they're sitting, and, uh, and obviously we, we seem to do okay sales-wise from that spot. 
And uh, you say studio, do you have a studio? We, that room also converts into a shooting space. So we, we do have a, uh, if, you, if that's what you mean by studio, we, we, yep. we do push, uh, roll the carpet up, push, push the, the lounge to a different spot. And um, behind where the camera is, there's more space where we have room to, to shoot newborns and, and small families. Okay. So when we look at the left-hand photograph, uh, far left, the front door is there of your home? Far left, so yeah, all the way to the left. So I'm standing next to the front door when I took that photo. Right. Um, and then you, 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 you move to the, sorry, far right, sorry, is the front door, pardon me. Okay. Um, and then you, you move to the left uh, immediately facing you if it would be our office, which I didn't show a picture of because we couldn't clean it up in time to take a photograph of it. Yeah. Um, and then you, you move, uh, entice the clients to move around, have a look at the pictures and then move around to their right where that, that door opens up that you can see in the studio there. Yeah. Uh, and then they, then they can have a seat. Okay. Fantastic. Or, or a wander. We actually encourage a wander around because there are images up on the walls. Yeah. Okay. So you do do some portraits about a hundred a year or so. Correct. Yeah. Uh, We've been traditionally a, a wedding, well, not wedding only, but ninety-five percent wedding studio with the odd trickle of portraits that come from uh, old wedding customers. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have uh, had a push uh, with your assistance to to move much uh, more into portraits, and and they're, they're roughly the numbers. Yeah, but a hundred a year. And uh, specialising in sort of outdoor black and white. Yeah, um, we we are a fan of uh, traditional techniques and lighting techniques that, that lend themselves to outdoor black and whites. But um, I'm, I'm certainly not not averse uh, averse to um, uh, doing colour images. Uh, we, we're not into fads. We we, we stick with uh, time and tested traditional portraiture. Um, I like to think we've got a little advantage um, uh, over a lot of newborn photographers that don't do families or don't know how to light families. Um, so we, we, we do the whole shebang right from you know two hours old right up to um, uh, grandparents, etc. Fantastic. And so you do a lot of weddings as well. Um, I just got to ask, ask you about this photograph. You sent me these photos in to show people tonight. That one where the bridal party is half missing, is that supposed to be that way or did you, did you <laughs> yes. come over and oh, that, take that photo? Oh, no, that, that, that's, that's intentional. Okay. <laughs> I actually think the, the one that's in the album is actually cropped uh, at the, the green where, where, where the, um, that crosswalk uh, the Yep comes down so it balances a lot nicer in the album. <laughs> okay. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not criticizing you, Chris. I'm just That's okay. asking no, well, a question. There's been a recent trend in, in AI or in, in awards at least to to, to, to the extreme um, extreme cropping or putting the subject right on an edge, which I quite admit doesn't look bad. So um but that's probably an example of that. And I believe that uh, there's an even bigger trend not to even have the subject in the photograph. Oh, that's fantastic. They're, okay. they're the I'm only <laughs> you are a judge, are you, at uh, at local level? I'm a state level judge, yeah. Oh. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to judging at APA in, in several, in a few years' time. Okay, well, that's great. Um, so. Your award-winning photographer. I, I just threw these couple up here. I, I don't know whether they're award-winning or not, but uh, they're beautiful photographs. And it certainly shows the area that you have the opportunity of photographing in. Is that right? Yeah, they're, they're, um, they're both country locations. One's the um, hinterland up in uh, and the Mulaney, uh, Sunshine Coast hinterland. That's the one on the right. Very famous tree, that one. Um, that's over-photographed, but it's such a nice spot. It never looks bad. And um, the one on the left is uh, Country New South Wales, I think. Uh, yeah. But um, we, we obviously do just as many city weddings as we do country. We just like showing the country ones because um, uh, I think the way we were taught sort of lends itself to that style as well. Yeah, and we'll be open and upfront and say you photograph around about 20 weddings a year. Yep. 
and so you, you're only after a certain amount of weddings uh, with a certain clientele. Correct. So how do you market to this clientele? Um, this is an ad we worked in for the bridal magazine and we felt it was very different. There was no other photographer um, would put an image in and, and sort of put the name out as, as much as this. Um, you do bridal fairs. Yes, we do, yeah. Tell us how you do those. How do you three, three or four a year at this point. Sorry. You do about four a year, did you say? Three to four a year. We're looking at even increasing that, yeah. And how do you approach the people that come to your stand? How, how do you let them know that you're not just your everyday photographer, that you are expensive? Um, we tell them <laughs> pretty much. Um, <laughs> I'm not backwards and coming forward. Um, without without that uh, without being that, that forward, um, uh, the situation would be I stand there. We we don't give out pamphlets to anyone that asks for them. Um, I'm interested in I'm only interested in a half dozen people in an entire weekend that we really connect with. Yep. Um, that seems like a waste of a lot of other people, but I'm only chasing a certain niche that uh, believes in what we believe in. Cut me off if I start to ramble, Bernie. But um, um, we have album. We sell albums. Albums are our, our main product. Uh, we're just talking weddings here. I'm not talking portraits. Yeah. Um, uh, we have a very strong conviction uh, that uh, without printed images and in, in, in a wedding album, um, you'll never have your images in 20, 30, 40, 50 years time when you actually really want to look at them. Um, so I have wedding albums out on the stand, the, uh, the customer, potential customer comes up, I invite them to literally put their hands all over it and touch it, and touch the paper. We, um, we're, we're lucky enough to have invested in a large format printer, we do all of our own printing which enables us to print on beautiful cotton papers mm. um, uh, in, in a cost effective way as opposed to where, where that type of paper is um, usually untenable to it's just too expensive to print on from from other commercial printers. Right. Um, so they sit, they literally they sit and they touch the album, and every single time they go, oh wow, because there's beautiful cotton textured papers that, that they've got under their fingers. Mm -hmm. It's not all about touch. It's obviously about the image and, and about a lot of other things. But that's the first thing we want them to connect with is a printed image. Um, uh, does that make sense? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, most of the photographers listening and watching this would say, yeah, but, you know, most people that come to us at a bridal fair come up to us and, and they want to sort of say, so how much do you charge? How do you handle that? I um, Once I talk about, I make them stand there and I talk about the albums and why we believe in prints over digital, um, and then I will quite happily show them the price list. Our price list is not scary. Uh, we we start. Uh, we don't have packages. We just have a three thousand dollar minimum spend. Um, uh, that works for us. Uh, that does not include digital files. Um, and the long story short is uh, they get told that uh, we design up a large album, roughly what's on the table, the tables in front of them. Um, they're prepaid for the first twenty pages, and I show them 80 plus and at the end of the date it's up to them how much they purchase or how many how many pages they purchase. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're smart, they can do in their head you know what, what the likely uh, spend levels are right. um, but obviously that's just, a, that's just an expo uh, scenario. If they're genuinely interested they will come into studio and I can expand um, but, and we're, we are brutally honest with all of our customers before they've booked about the likely spend, uh, but at the same time, there's no pressure, and I'm not going to judge them if they don't. Um, so everyone that books knows this prior to booking, not not afterwards. Uh, so we we value uh, educating uh, the customer from minute one before they booked, uh, which I think is probably a key uh, to to achieving uh, effortless sales at the other end. Yeah. And you are brutally honest, as you say. You do mention big numbers to them. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, I, I toyed with it whether I'd come out and say you're likely to spend ten thousand dollars or eight thousand um, dollars, or uh, we're, we're very upfront and say I will show you an album that's eighty pages in size. Uh, and then you know you, you can see what happens. 
especially in studio, they, they have a look and the per side price is that and they start doing the numbers in their head and they work it out and and uh, and the ones, uh, you, you can see them work it out. So the one, when they book, that the, the, the they know exactly exactly what they're booking. Um, they are very, we make it very, very clear that they are under absolutely no pressure whatsoever um, and I'm not going to sit there and judge them if they cull pages out. Um, and, and that's true, I don't, I, 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 my, my job in, in a sale at that point, I'm sure we'll get to this later, but uh, is, is to help them get where they want to go, uh, yeah. whether that's take the whole lot or, or cull it down for whatever reason, usually budget. Yeah, just a quick question. I, I'm, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions, uh, Chris. Uh, some yeah, will come fine. through here, some will be my own, but uh, Paul wants to know, can you define your niche? My niche? Um, I like to say it's people with a lot of money, but that's just simply not true. Yeah. Um, our niche, I am extremely passionate about printing. Yeah. I make that really clear from minute one with a client. It's the clients that uh, agree with that foresight or agree with that, that statement or that concept. Um, I have examples in studio of one hundred prints that are literally, I'm actually holding in my hand right now, a print that's 100 years old. Well, it's probably more than that. It's probably close to 105. Um, once they see that, they get it, that, that this, this, this album is going to be around for that length of time. Um, uh, I'm probably going off topic now. What was the question again? <laughs> no, uh, a niche, but you were talking about... Oh, the niche. The, the, niche. the niche is the people that believe what we believe in. Yeah. And, and, and get passionate about what I'm passionate about. That, that, that's a bit hard to define. Uh, I've personally found it hard to define and I don't know where to go and find these people other than after talking to them for, for a few minutes they either agree with me or they don't or they think the potential spend is worth that or they don't. It's, um, we, it's, a great, it's an excellent question. I'm, I'm actually not sure how to, how to answer it fully. Um, we have people uh, we, we have lawyers right through to tradies and everyone with more and less money uh, and in between. Um, uh, so we, 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 we certainly haven't uh, had a trend towards a particular profession or a particular income level or anything like that. It, it seems to be irrelevant to us. Right. Um, it's, it's, it's more about appealing to, to the fact that you know, this is for, their, for them, but then ultimately it's for the grand, their kids and their grandkids. So just getting back to marketing, uh, so you do bridal fairs, uh, you get a lot of leads there, you really approach people on, on the basis of you are looking for customers there, customers are not looking for you, perhaps they are in a different way, but you seek out the ones that will be your potential clients. Um, yep. And you do magazine advertising? We do from a, a branding point of view. We want to be seen by people, of, you know, I think the magic number is seven, isn't it? Seven times, so a magazine ad or two, bridal fair. We find most people at book by bridal fairs have been to more than one and have seen us a couple of times. Um, uh, we have a Facebook presence um, that's carefully targeted now. Uh, it didn't used to be, but it is now. Um, is that what you need? We also partner heavily with um, uh, with venues, so we've got our, a, a few our ven our favourite venues in Brisbane that we have great relationships with, and and we have a, a formal uh, referral system in place with with several venues. Okay, so you're a, a preferred supplier. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. So let's look at this ten thousand dollar plus wedding albums. Um, so you're using exactly the same system I used in my business of album planning, uh, which was that the customer came in at a certain price with a certain number of sides. We would explain that the only time they can really decide what they want is when they see their photographs, and it's at that Correct. time you do the album planning session, and it's from there that we would tell them that it will plan to a lot more pages than they're paid for, but what they do about it is, is up to them. Um, and so you sort of uh, give them that education, that expectation that they will want to spend more and we'd also tell them don't spend all your money on your honeymoon, you're going to need a few thousand for your album <laughs> and so on. So That's we right. plant those seeds throughout. 
But one thing you do um, that um, is pretty strong in the way you come out with the information you give them, and if you don't mind me just reading this from this uh, one of the key letters you give give them, they sa you say that uh, you will be prepaid for 20 pages, uh, there'll be a further investment depending on how many extra pages you wish to purchase. And I like that because it says there will be a further investment, it doesn't say there may be. Yes, correct. We also term the, the, the minimum as a minimum or an initial, it doesn't mention anything about an all-inclusive, that's all they'll ever have to pay. It's never mentioned like that. It's always termed as an initial payment or uh, an initial investment um, or a starting point. Yeah. And the, the 20 sides that's included is always termed the first 20 sides. Okay, so the other thing is, and a lot of photographers out there will be asking, you know, but what if they say, oh, do we get to keep the files? That's all right. The files are available, but never, ever by themselves and they're tied into the album. So if they purchase an 80-page album, that 80 pages worth of files will be available at a price. If they cull it down to 40 pages, that 40 pages worth of images will be available for the same price. Okay. So they do get an opportunity of purchasing or they may be um, included in a, in a sort of a uh, uh, end of album planning package. Yeah, correct. Wait and see, in other words. Pretty, pretty, pretty much, yeah. But it's it's that you want them to have an album because you believe in albums. They Unless they get an album, there's no way known. They, you just do a shoot and burn. Yeah, no, we don't. We simply don't do a shoot and burn. So I want to talk to you about these albums. They sound fantastic and they're unique. Just tell us about you, you've got a... Uh, a local supplier that just does them for you. You do your own printing, so you're sort of the, the manufacturer all the way through. Tell us just a little bit about that. Um, uh, the, we have a personal bookbinder. Um, Boss Photography, I see the files that are in the album. I can expand on that. The short answer is yes, but I can expand on that afterwards. Um, just remind me later. Um, the albums, we have a personal bookbinder. Uh, who takes our pages, cuts them, or we obviously give him guides, uh, cuts them and then binds them into into the album. Yep. Um, there are uh, I will, there are plenty of quality album companies out there and they're fantastic, but this is just the the way we've chosen to go along with um, sort of the less man, the less mass manufactured yep. viewpoint and to, to more of a custom build. Although album companies will, will, if you talk to them, they will custom build stuff for you, or at least I hope they would. Um, uh, so so the, these people definitely want to help you, so um, you go and talk to them. Um, uh, so we, we, but we, our personal situation at the moment is we have a custom uh, bookbinder uh, who, who does beautiful work, very long experience, and, um, uh, and uh, binds up uh, our albums for us uh, and is able to do acrylic plaques on the front and embossing and all the, all the pretty stuff uh, as well. Um, we, we, we have it, we, we uh, tell the customers, and it, it is the true thing, that everything is, you know, everything is uh, made from the ground up, none of it's mass produced. We can design any size album they like. Uh, we have a standard at 14 by 11, but if they want a long thin album or a vertical album or a square album, they can have it. Uh, we just need to know that before we start planning it. Um, is that is that what you need? Yeah. So basically, you do you you do truly do bespoke albums. They yeah. are uh, created from the ground up by you. Correct. Uh, you know, the the, the handcrafted. Uh, uh, photographed by you, you, you do the printing, you, you really uh, oversee the album manufacturer itself um, and make sure they get Absolutely. a unique product. Absolutely. I'll tell them to think out of the box. There's plenty of examples out there, especially, in, I don't know about down south, but Brisbane, there's, there's lots of examples of um, amazing things being done with, with uh, record LPs sitting in album covers and 
and and uh, and multiple multiple copies on lazy susan, multiple volumes on a lazy susan, and and, and stuff like that. There's, there's you can the, the sky's the limit when it comes to presentation options. Yeah. Um, most of the clients still go with a 14 by 11 album, but it, it doesn't mean they can't use their imagination if they want to. You've probably already seen the four volume uh, example that we we have. We we haven't done an awful lot of them because they are expensive to produce. But then if you're charging. I think the last one of those we sold was a twelve or thirteen thousand dollar album. So um, I'm happy to spend um, a lot more on, on 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 the end product when 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 that sort of spend is involved. Um, we we only produce we only print on the best papers. Um, we don't use cheap uh, non-archival papers. We're using expensive, um, you know, 100 percent cotton uh, uh, papers. I, I won't name brands. I'm not into selling stuff tonight. But um. um uh, everything is top notch. The client knows they're not getting a shit product from a pardon my French, uh, from you know imported from America that, that, that that's printed mediocrely on on on, on uh, non archival uh, media. So you won't you don't compromise on quality. Absolutely not. Okay. To the point where we admittedly probably spend more than the average photographer on the product. Okay. Um, that four volume album, I, I'll use it as an example, um, I think a lot of people thought we were nuts because you try spending, working how much four volumes, four albums cost as opposed to one. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot of the cost is involved in, in, in doing the, the, the covers, but then again, the, the customers rave about it, they, they, they love it. We actually had a customer design their lounge room around the album. The album was the centerpiece because it was a Chinese wedding. It was a beautiful red leather encased four volume set that, like you saw there, yeah. and it, it, it is the, it is the feature of the room. So they built over the top. Room, it's what we're achieving, what we're aiming to achieve. They built a room around the album. Well, they designed their lounge room around the album was the feature piece of the room, as opposed to a, a wall piece of wall art or, or something like that. Well, that's fantastic, isn't it? Mm. So I'll just go through some of the album layouts, just a few, but now we're coming to post-production and this is where photographers spend so much time. You seem to have it nailed down pretty well, so maybe we can just look at the timing of it and how you do it and uh, with your post-production and your editing and your culling mm -hmm. and then, maybe, then we'll talk about uh, album layouts. So Post-production, just tell us about it. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll name a couple of, am I able to name a couple of pieces of software? Sure. Okay. So first thing we do is to cull uh, or create a, the, the best of list of the, the, the photographs that were taken on the day. And how, use, many, uh, photo. how many would you Sorry? take? How many photographs would you take? It varies. Um, Somewhere between roughly about 2,000, probably a little more than average. But again, with digital, as everyone knows, there's no day to day. It doesn't cost you to click the shutter button. Mm -hmm. um, not with cameras that rated to 400,000 actuations. Um, uh, so around the 2,000 mark. Sometimes it's less. Sometimes it's more. If I've been there for six hours, it's less. If I've been there for 12 hours, it's more. Um, we then pop everything in Photo Mechanic. There is no other program, in my opinion, that's any good for culling images quickly. Right. So, of two or three thousand images, I will do that inside an hour. Um, I'm extremely fast at it. Um, Photo Mechanic works by taking the JPEG out of the RAW file and displaying that, rather than trying to read the JPEG, rather than trying to read the RAW file. Yeah. So you can do a cull very quickly. Um, they then go into Lightroom. Uh, which we then do the corrections for. Again, I try not to let that take more than about an hour. So that's on final set of anywhere between 500 to 800 proofs. You, you know, other people might work with less less final images, and other people might work with more. I think the numbers are relevant as long as you're happy with the set you've got. Um, so we we do the corrections in light. These are basic corrections. These are just exposure density, contrast, uh, uh, etc. Um, uh, and then we um, select uh, a final set, so we actually cull it down again into the set that we'll use for the album. So that we, you're then thinking in terms of page layouts in, instead of just do you like the image or not. 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, they're, they're, they're then selected. That doesn't take very long at all, less than an hour. Um, and then they are imported into a program called Smart Albums, and I think we've got a special offer for yeah, that we're coming up later. Up. We'll come up to that, yep. Yeah, cool, cool. So that's put into Smart Albums, <clears throat> uh, which is then an 80-page album design uh, is done inside about two hours. Um, we, we've done bigger album. That particular wedding you're looking at uh, was unbelievably beautiful, and I think we ended up designing about 180 pages for that one. We didn't sell 180 pages. <laughs> 180 times. <laughs> it, it, 180. It designed itself. Um, uh, but that, that's an extreme. Normally we design between 80 to 100. Um, uh, the, but the Smart Album software is extremely amazing. You tell it what you want on a page and you just keep clicking a button until the page looks like the way you want it to look like. Um, it then exports an InDesign file, which we then import into InDesign and we do all of our uh, with uh, any smaller adjustments or um, that we basically don't touch, we pop it into InDesign and then do all the post-production, the proper post-production or finishing work on whatever images ended up in this album design. So the design itself, two hours, and then pops it into InDesign, which we then usually spend about one day, one full day, um, doing the post-production on, on 80 pages uh, worth of images, which I don't know how many of that is. We don't count them, to be honest. I think it's about two and a half per page on average. So. Yeah. Um, work that out, 200 odd images. And let me just ca clarify your processes. So when the couple come in uh, a couple of weeks before the wedding, do the final details, yeah. correct, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you make yeah. time for them to come back before they get back to work or is it after? How long before they can come back and you pre-design the album, they don't choose the photos you pre-design and they come in Correct. and then they make decisions on whether they take it as is or make any changes. Is that the process? Correct. Okay. That's all exactly correct, yeah. So we, we need to know what album we're designing prior to yeah. them coming back in. So we get that decision prior to the wedding. Um, we then uh, get to work straight away after the wedding and have all of this finished. So they say a finished album design with um, uh, all 95 percent of the post-production done um, yeah. in, a, in about a two-week period, three-week period. We don't need two or three weeks, but that's usually by the time they've gone away to honeymoon, had a week off before they go back to work. So yes, you are correct. The ideal time for us um, is to get them before they go back to work. More so is just so they can get daytime appointments, so I'm not yeah. staying up until 10 o'clock at night with tired customers. And, and, and just to clarify that uh, you don't do all that work. Uh, Michelle does work in the business, so uh, Michelle, Absolutely right. what, what part of that? The album design? Um, after the, the, after the uh, images have been culled and basic corrections made, I don't usually see it until the sale day. Okay. So she does everything else. She's amazing. So she does the album design, all the post-production, um, and then we export it ready for ready for viewing. And that's while you're down at the beach surfing or something, is it? Golfing usually. Yeah. Oh, golfing. Okay. Now, <laughs> and that's besides. You have two kids, of course. Uh, how old are they? Three and three and five. And so Michelle looks after them as well. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we um, I like to say we, we, we both do that. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, no, we, we, we wrangle, we, ra we happily wrangle two beautiful daughters uh, during during all of this. Okay, that's great. Good good to see you inputting into parenthood. That's great, Chris. So, so <laughs> just, um, I just want to make some comments just because I know people yeah, are yeah, looking yeah. at these photos and they're saying like, this one, they say, those photographs, those four on the outside, they're the same. Yep, they are. Well, they're not exactly the same. Well, actually, two of them might be. No, no, they're all different, but they're all essentially the same The same setting, yeah. And and photographers out there were saying, how, how did you get away with that, you know? Uh, why, why it's not. Oh, I've, got, I've got an answer for that one. Oh. Um, why should I make their decisions for them? Right. If they've got enough money to spend, however much, on a spread where the, the photos are essentially similar, but when you look through them, a little story becomes apparent. Um, why should I make that decision to cull it for them? 
um, uh, they're, they're, they're adults and they, 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 they want what they want, so we, we present stuff to them and let them tell us if they want to lose it. Uh, having said that, I do remember a photographer in Melbourne, very well-known photographer, who actually did put duplicates in the album. And <laughs> that was old. Same photo, just printed twice in two different sizes. So, as you say, if, if that's yeah. what the customer wants, um, let them have it, yeah. Yeah, don't don't judge the customer. Don't ever think how much. Don't judge how much they'll spend based on their job. Don't judge anything. Just they, they you know, they're, they're they're buying the memories. They, you know, um, they're you buying. Take money out of your pocket, thinking that they won't want that, so I won't bother. Yeah, as as I said, they're buying their memories, not yours. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Exactly. Okay. So we see some reception photographs here. Does that mean you stay? Uh, uh, at night, uh, all all reception as normal. No, to be honest, I try to avoid it. Um, I would prefer to get back at six o'clock or finish at six or six thirty, and and uh, and get back and see the the kids before they go to bed, and and then do the download and all that usual stuff, and have a half decent bedtime. Um, but on the other hand, if the client Really, really does want me there for the formal parts of the of the reception. I'm more than happy to do it. There is a charge, uh, but at, at the same time, we don't pressure them for me to stay. So I'm not interested in that charge, basically. Right. Um, but if they want me to stay, then they, they do pay a little extra. Yeah. Yeah, and then you stay. I bring this image up, Chris, because you sent this to me. Can you explain it to me? Um, I needed something hearty, farty. Okay. <laughs> okay, I, I saw the stairwell. I wanted to use it. I, I just, I love the. Um, I'm gonna get uh, my my Artie hat on. You know the, the the detail in the wood on the stairs, and you know we've got a similar set of you know polished wooden stairs, and and just the, uh, the you know the, the juxtaposition of the of the motion. Um, that motion's done in Photoshop. Um, which I wouldn't normally do these days. It's quite an old image. Um, I would have set up a you know a tripod and done it and done it in camera, but uh, uh, that particular one was done in Photoshop with motion blur. I just found it interesting because when I first saw it, I didn't quite get what it was, and then when I saw it, and the more I look at it, the more I start to like it. And I suppose art is like that. Um, and in fact, a lot of art is not supposed to be liked, is it? It's supposed to be. Oh, as long as you get something from it, Paul Sincotta just uh, mentioned what he what he what he got out of it. It's, you know, as long as you're getting that's how photography works, isn't it? As long as you're getting something out of the image, it it, it generates an emotion or a thought or a, or a thought process. Uh, it doesn't matter what it was, as long as you got something out of it. Someone might you know might you might get a hundred different interpretations of this. Yeah, image. yeah. Um, just thought I'd throw that in as a curveball. Oh, I've always I've always loved it. It's a full page uh, in that particular album. Um, I'm trying not to overthink. Oh no, sorry. It's all right. Before we yeah, get into uh, Pixaloo and Smart Albums, um, we'll just wait for you to fill that. Yeah, sorry, I'm hitting the button. There we go. Done. Sorry. Okay. Um, uh, before we get into that, I just want to ask you a, a couple of questions and also some questions that I've got from uh, people listening to this. One of the questions uh, we've got here is, do they only receive the files that are in the album? Correct. Yeah, um, I'll answer that one. The way we approach files is for a, I'm not going to name pricing, um, but um, for a fee, they can obtain the high-resolution album images, which are finished, which have had all the skin smoothing and the, the hand work done in Photoshop, um, plus a full set of proofs at high resolution. So um, the proofs are quality images; they've been well shot. They're, 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 they're all, you know, visually corrected in terms of their color and density and exposure. I don't really need exposure correction, but um, but that full set of proofs. So let's say, for example, 600 proofs plus the, for example, 200 finished album images. So there is a double up of a set. Um, we always, always tie the digital product into the printed product. So the price is the same whether they end up at an 80-page album or they end up with a 20-page album. The price is the same. 
For the files. Does that make sense? For the files, yeah. It's over $1,000 for the files. Okay. And Rachel says, how long have you been in business and have you always approached weddings this way? Uh, uh, 11 years, I think, as far as the ATO is concerned. Um, uh, uh, and yes, so we were, we uh, had mentors, uh, did a loose apprenticeship, I suppose you could say, with, with one of the country's uh, best portraiters and wedding photographers, um, uh, which is where we learnt all of the, most of the processes, uh, all the, 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 the value of the print, basically. So yes, we've always approached it. We've never ever shoot, shot and burn um, in our in our in our history. Uh, we did think of changing our minds at one point because it was so bloody difficult to convince people. But um, I don't know whether my passion has increased and that's more apparent, or it's just clients are coming around to the fact and appreciating the fact that prints uh, will always be around longer than a set of files will. Um, so yes, the short answer is yes. We've always approached it, uh, always approached it this way. Um, as someone uh, had a look at your website and made a comment that your website was very dated. How do you uh, answer that? Uh, it depends if you mean the, the design of the website or the, the, the photographs on it. Yeah, uh, all of the above. The, the, the website itself is dated. We, the, the, the structure of the website where we're addressing, we're actually going to have a new one hopefully by the start of next year. So that, that's probably a valid comment. Um, if they're talking about the imagery, is dated, um, uh, that it makes me quite happy because it means, it, or it, it, to me that basically means it's a lot more timeless. Uh, and um, we, 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 we've always shot with the traditional lighting techniques in mind. Uh, Rembrandt lighting is what we you know, generally aim for. Obviously lighting changes from, from, from time to time, whether we're using rim lighting or butterfly or, or um, side lighting or, or whatever. But um, uh, I don't mind if, if the images look like they were, you know, shot 50 years ago because well, Rembrandt started painting back in 1600, so <laughs> I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, uh, Paul says respect. They built a room around the album. Very cool. Yes. Uh, yeah, I was I was overjoyed. The other um, story that, that I like to to to, to impart um, about why we do this, uh, like that that's one example, um, uh, but uh, we, we have a very lovely uh, past couple who um, both emailed me after their anniversary, after their first anniversary, they're both in the forces and uh, we're both, uh, one was deployed overseas at the time and, and they, I don't know whether they knew they both emailed me, but they both emailed me separately. Um, and told me how they looked over their album via Skype together on their anniversary, and, and thought it was is important enough to, to let me know. So that was that was awesome. That that's why we do this. Yeah, that's great. Um, and just one other question from me: um, engagement shoots. Do you do engagement shoots of every bride you photograph? Yeah, uh, we do. At the moment, we we do include an engagement sitting in. Um, Within that minimum, mm. we we find um, the more client contact, you got to balance that over spending too much time and wasting too much time. But uh, the the more time, the more client contact we have prior and after the wedding, the the closer the relationship gets. Which I'm quite sure it's got something to do with their overall spend. Yeah. Um, so we do do engagements uh, sitting and then and then make a portrait related uh, product available for them to purchase. Same scenario digital files are available. This is a very new thing for us, but at the same time, they are tied into a printed product. They never ever are able to purchase a digital product on its own. Right, and um, you know, Rob asks, how many ways do you currently shoot a year? We mentioned that. Oh, that's right. I think there was a question. I missed it. Yeah, about 20. Um, I wouldn't mind shooting more, to be honest, but with the way we work, we probably turn off just as many people as we turn on, uh, without getting rude. Um, so that that's possibly uh, why that's the case. Um, but at the same time, I'm happy shooting uh, 20 weddings a year at an average of 10, as opposed to shooting you know 40 a year with an average of four. 
yeah. or more weddings at an average that's that or less. Sure. And as we looked at that, we in our coaching session last week, we looked at quickly through some numbers and the interesting thing was that your average album sale from 2009 has gone up. Yes, it's gone up about 700. I've, I've got to look at the numbers again. Well, it, it went, I think it's gone up about $700, $800 every year. Yeah, which is fantastic. And the, the highest album sale you've ever done? It was just short of 14. Right. That's my next goal. What, crack the 40. 14. No, your next goal <laughs> would be to crack my highest, which was 15,500. Oh, okay. There's a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> and that was uh, the wrong type of client because it was second marriage and, uh, you know, small wedding and 15 and a half thousand later, all I did was give them, them the opportunity of spending as much as they wanted, which is what you do. Yes. And yes. Uh, so, um, yeah. I was happy and they were happy. So, you know. Yeah. We get a remarkable number of take all of it. So if I'm going to be my worst critic is technically we don't design enough pages. <laughs> really? We should always be leaving something on the table. Well, uh, the one I did was a two album set, uh, 16 by 16 inch albums. So maybe you should go to a to the four album set again. Yeah, we, we, we've, we've, well, we've done a few 110 page albums recently and you can't put 110 pages into an album expected to stay together. So they by default become two album sets. We've got a few of those in production at the moment. Yeah. So let's talk about... Yeah, you, you are right. Talk about Pixaloo and smart albums. Yeah. Um, Pixaloo, a uh, company that created a program called Smart Albums. Um, just uh, any disclosures, I have. I don't get any uh, monetary or product benefit from saying this. We, we, I contacted them today and said we love them. We just paid our annual membership last week um, or subscription, uh, but Smart Albums is the, is the software that you can design your album extremely quickly um, and then it will, we're fans of InDesign, so we will output an InDesign file for you then to tweak as much as you want. Um, it just lets you get those layouts finished, you, there's less umming and ahhing, it's extremely quick. Um, we, we wouldn't Think of you uh, think of designing an album without it, just because you know the two hours then goes to four or five or six straight away. Yeah. Um, do you want me to ex oh, tell me what you want me to expand on there, Benny? Well, what we're going to do? They offered a, a, us a, a. Oh yeah, I, I went to them. That's right. I went to them today and said we love them. Uh, can they offer uh, you guys anything? And they said we're um, happy to have a competition and, and lucky person tonight. Uh, we'll be able to win a year's subscription to Smart Albums. They were quite happy uh, to give that away. Um, and as I said before, I'm not getting any kickback from this whatsoever. We've just paid our bill. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm quite happy to get the product that we basically would do without. <laughs> well, the good thing is, Chris, you can't afford to pay your bill. I can, I can afford to pay my bills. Yes, I can. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Easily. <laughs> so um, <laughs> what I thought as a competition, seeing as we've had nearly 100 people register for this uh, webinar, uh, knowing that it was being recorded and that they'd be able to get a link to the recording and that obviously a lot of uh, photographers aren't on, it would be unfair to make it available for the photographers that are just listening now. I thought what I'd do tomorrow is send out a uh, a link for all those that registered uh, with this uh, competition and ask them a simple question and then they'd have to answer that question, email it to me and then all of the ones who got the uh, question right, I'd make a draw and then there'd be a winner. Sounds good. So, and the question will be this, what was your highest album sale again? Uh, just let's, uh, it's, it's high 13, so let's just say 13 and a half. No, I'll tell you what it was. You're exaggerating a little bit. It was 13,130. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I know that because I asked Michelle, right? And she's good oh, with it. Yeah. All right, so Pardon the answer, me, everyone. Yeah. 
the answer to the question will be what was her highest album Chris has sold okay so but that oh, means yeah. that I'm making the other people listen to this to get the answer all right well done uh, to listen to the recording <laughs> to get the answer okay so that's a competition oh, yeah. worth about three hundred dollars isn't it or something Final subscriptions are roughly three hundred dollars, correct? Yeah. I looked at the website this morning. I think it was around that. I didn't delve into it exactly, but I think that's a pretty cool prize, and we must thank them for doing that. It shows they're a pretty cool, smart company. Hey, that's why they're called Smart Albums. Absolutely, absolutely. And we like them a lot. Um, we've got no other questions, Chris. So I'm going to just sort of thank you for your your time there that's been fantastic um, the oh, question, as I say is uh, wedding photography is dying or is it absolutely not absolutely not. Find and that's, <laughs> that's the perfect answer <laughs> that I wanted from you of course is as far as you're concerned it's booming and you're, yeah, you're the only thing that's going to limit you is yourself. Um, you're seeing growth every year, and that's fantastic. And that's what a business wants to see: growth every year, even at your high level. And uh, it, it's just great to see that. It's um, as a coach, it's it's fantastic to to see where you're you're heading. I mean, the the sky's the limit, right? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. There is there is no limit. The limit is what you put on it. And and you you were disappointed the other week. I know when someone didn't quite spend as much as you wanted. They only spent nearly four thousand dollars extra, so it was only a seven thousand dollar album sale. And you were terribly disappointed. <laughs> I started dissecting my process and had to work out what was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but that was just a glitch. All right, everything. It's. Oh yeah. All about the average. Yeah, these, are, these are averages. Some spend less and some spend more. But, um, some spend a lot less and some spend a lot more. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And I've seen your figures, so I can certainly uh, ratify that they are the right figures. So, again, Chris, thank you very much. And uh, be speaking to you next week. And thanks, everybody, for attending. That's been great. And don't forget to enter the competition. Expect an email from me tomorrow. And Chris, if you can thank Michelle as well for putting the kids to bed while we're doing this. I will. Thanks, Benny. And thank you, everyone, for, for chiming in and having a listen. I hope you got something out of it. All right.